Hey guys, this is Drew at the Goose Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about everything old holders uh, between PCGS, NGC, and ANA. So stay tuned, enjoy the video, uh, be bound to learn something. So a few videos back, we interviewed uh, a coin dealer that we know as Trent Schwartz. He's a really nice guy, um, and he told us to catch up on some knowledge if we want to become more successful coin dealers. Uh, the more knowledge you have, the more people you can help, and the better coin deals you can actually achieve. And so we were actually given a few books from a, a local book lady. Her name is Amy Butler. Uh, a lot of nice numismatic books, but if you guys are interested in reaching out to her, uh, here's her information right here. Um, but yeah, just take a screenshot of that or, um, you know, if you guys want to head over to our website, AkushaCollectibles.com, uh, if you guys order something, you might be receiving a book from us. Uh, she gave us a lot of nice stuff and we couldn't thank her enough. Buy the coin, not the holder. False. But what does that mean to you, right? If someone tells you to buy the coin and not the holder, are you going to pass up on a $2,000 holder? Are you going to pass up on a doily just because you don't need it? That's just not true, man. So you're telling me a piece of plastic is worth a few thousand dollars, Drew? Sometimes. What's a good example, Drew? This coin. 1923, piece dollar, MS63, by NGC, white label. Why is it so expensive? It's expensive because they only use this uh, label for about a month. And, th and then they moved on to other holders like this one. Where they have all this crap in the background. How do you know that information, Drew? Where can you find that? I know that information because of NGC's Museum of Holder History. It gives you all the information that you need. So when you're out looking, you can start hunting coin holders and then make money from that. Because when you actually understand it fully, um, you're not only just hunting the coin, but you're also hunting the coin that isn't a finite holder. You can't add any more of these into circulation. Once they're here, they're a part of history, just like the coins are. Where are they going to see that website link? They're going to see that website link in the description below, just like all the other ones we're talking about, like PCGS, the way PCGS has doilies. Doilies, which we found a few videos back, a nice 1923 doily graded MS64, that one sold for 400 bucks. you got to find stuff like that. Where can you find that? When were they produced? They were produced uh, a month, for a month, at PCGS. Here's the information right here. It'll tell you all about it. Um, I forgot which month it was. <laughs> it was a fantastic month, homie. Okay, so we're going to show you guys the trilogy here. And the trilogy meaning NGC, PCGS, ANA. And some other crappy holders we'll talk about at the end. But the first one we want to talk about is ANA. And if you guys uh, can see this right here, A and A is in the background of the paper there. Um, and it was a little bit showing you guys a little bit earlier about the book here as well. Uh, they basically created a lot of the grading standards for U.S. coins today, um, and they also graded coins back in the day and had them in these old holders. You can see that also um, by the reverse here, uh, American Numismatic Association. Um, so these have actually become very, very collectible in the past uh, few years. Um, and the, what they actually did with uh, these holders when they were sold their company out, um, their grading company out, they actually sold all the rest of the holders to ANX. And you can actually see the paper in the background here as well. Um, the new holders are ANX holders. Um, and then you can see that they actually filled that sticker in on the back with ANX as well. Um, so kind of an interesting history here. Um, and like I said, these have actually started to become very, uh, you know, a l very desirable. Um, I'll show you guys a few sold comps here really quickly. Um, bang, 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 you know, you got them all there. Um, but up next, I want to show you guys uh, these two holders here. This is the PCGS Rattler holder. Um, you know, these were used from 1986 to 1989. Um, you know, a bulk of the older coins were actually housed in these, but they're also starting to become more collectible, just like the ANA holders. Um, and when you're looking for on these coins, mainly is uh, rarity of the coin, the grade of the coin, um, and also just the desirability of it. And how many were actually put in the holders back then? You're going to see most of these Rattler holders with Morgan dollars or Peace dollars. 
Uh, but if you can find really any type coin or anything out of the ordinary, even contemporary com commemoratives, uh, you'll be you'll be able to make a little bit of money on those as well. Um, here's an interesting holder from back then. Um, once they st stopped using the doily holder, kind of the uh, that paper in the background, they started putting them uh, in these uh, two piece holders, uh, but with different paper. Um, and you can actually tell that by just understanding that uh, the reverse is one piece um, and the other side's one piece. Um, and then I'll actually inside um, of the two piece is going to be a rattler just like this one. The next group we want to show you guys is these NGC coins right here. Um, we ended up picking up this coin a while back um, at a coin show for $50. And if you guys don't know, this is an NGC white label like we were talking about earlier. Um, you can see that just by the backdrop on the coin. Um, and like we were talking about with the other uh, two previous examples here, um, you know, backdrop on the coin is where you can kind of tell where the A and A, A and X, uh, and also when the doily kind of started coming out as well. And then that also kind of trends right into NGC. So most of the time they never really change the plastic on certain coins. They normally add it to them um, or they kind of change them over a period of time. But mainly it's really about uh, the paper that they used in the background. So we're filming a little bit behind the scenes here with the packer, the stacker, Casey. <laughs> well, he's packing up a bunch of stuff uh, for you guys. But uh, if you guys are looking for something in particular, AcousticCollectibles.com. If you guys are enjoying the video, make sure to leave a like. Uh, subscribe if you're new and uh, comment your thoughts down below. Got uh, a lot more episode to show you guys. Now that we talked about these three main grading companies right here, uh, let's talk about this grading company, which, you know, we were talking about desirability, collectability of these holders. Um, but there are holders like this one uh, where they're actually not too collectible just because of the name that is on the back of these holders, Hans Tooling. If you guys want to know anything about him, uh, look it up on the internet. You guys will find a bunch of great information about this uh, dealer that wanted to make his own grading company. Um, and yeah, and like we were talking about previously, if you guys want to understand more about uh, all three of these grading companies just check our uh, link in bio. Uh, we got a lot of interesting things uh, to share with you guys. A lot of interesting sources that we found about ANX, ANA slabs, NGC slabs, um, and also uh, the PCGS Museum of Coin Holders. All of these will be great kind of uh, tools for you guys, especially when you're hunting shows, to try to find coins that uh, either are rare in certain holders or are the holders are rare in general. So. Uh, pretty nice guide here, um, you know, stuff like this, uh, the 108 holder, um, if you guys see 108 at the beginning of your Rattler, uh, stuff like this is pretty expensive just because they use it for a very short period, uh, the first few days of PCGS operations, so um, just stuff like this, um, researching, um, you know, catching up on knowledge can really help you guys in a lot of ways, um, you guys will be benefited by all three of these links. Um, look at that black, black cased white label. Very rare. But something like this is something that we own. Um, hopefully you guys can find one one day. Um, like we said, there are very few out there, but um, just stuff that you guys really should uh, understand. Um, when we actually found the white label that we found, we, we took it around to many different people at the show. And they had no idea what it was. Um, they just thought, you know, maybe it's like, uh, you know, the wrong coin was in a, a different holder or just, just stuff like that. They didn't really understand uh, the, the whole different types of holders that you can actually find um, that come out of old collections. But yeah, use these links. You guys will enjoy them. Let me talk with you guys a little bit about what coins are in these holders as well. Um, this is an interesting Proof 67 Cameo uh, Washington Quarter. Uh, you know, great Proof 67 Cameo by a and &A. Uh, the reason why I bought this coin really is because it has some interesting color when you put it in the light here. Um, you know, and it has the same kind of trend on the reverse. Uh, you know, when you find an interesting coin in a rare holder, uh, which you guys are going to see and learn about in a few days, we bought a really expensive coin in one of these ANA holders, um, you really enjoy it. Um, another point that we picked up, but in an ANX holder, um, is an 1881 uh, Morgan Dollar graded MS64 proof like uh, by ANX. Uh, I do agree with their grade just because of, you know, the fields that you can actually see here. Uh, you know, about four inches of uh, the reflectivity of of the coin. Uh, but when you flip over the coin, you know, it's the same kind of trend on the reverse. Uh, no ugly spots really other than uh, on her head here. Um, but a really nice coin. 1881 in proof like is a very tough date. Um, here's a, a coin, the, probably my favorite one of the video. 
Uh, this is an 1867 uh, half dime, graded uh, proof 64 uh, by PCGS. I um, mean, if you guys can see uh, very faintly there, there is some red and uh, blue toning, which you guys do see that a lot on uh, proofs that are a little bit older. Uh, there's actually 625 of these that were ever minted um, in 1867. Um, and it was two years after the Civil War, which I really do like. Um, and the date's a little bit different, if you can see that right there underneath her. Um, but when you flip over the coin, I do like uh, this part of the coin more, just because it has a little bit more of clear fields. Um, and you can kind of see a little bit more of the details better, not as dark. Um, and so, you know, I really like this coin. I don't think it's been a CAC, but I'm not sure I would send it. Um, but what else here? Uh, you know, we like picking up Mercury Dimes, especially in older holders, just because they do demand that premium uh, sometimes. Um, I like this coin because it's just nice and blast white. Um, I don't think it would cack, sadly, just because uh, of the PVC that they used to uh, kind of skimp on and not, not grade as hard and harshly on. I mean, you can kind of see that right down by In God We Trust. There's like PVC just right there. Um, here are two other coins, like we were talking about earlier. Uh, the white label, um, you know, I don't really care what's in this holder. It's just that we have that holder. Um, here's a nicely toned uh, Morgan dollar. You can kind of see an interesting crescent down by her chin um, and all the way covering the date. I do like when the date's covered by toning. It's pretty interesting. Um, when you flip over the coin, it has some nice rim toning there, but nothing too interesting about it. Um, you know, but pretty interesting coins as well. I know that the white label won't be leaving our collection. Um, and I actually like... You know, I said the, these aren't too desirable, and they aren't, but I do like to pick them up now just in case they ever do get desirable. Um, you know, it's always good to buy them uh, when they're the least uh, hot time. You know, you don't want to buy things when they're too expensive, um, just like the doilies and other stuff. But um, stuff like this, I try to pick up. Maybe I'll kind of assemble a whole Franklin or Kennedy set. Who knows? Um, really excited, though, about kind of adding a few of these when they're really affordable. All right, guys, we're here with Casey. He's going to show us how to crack out a coin. And we're cracking this coin out because someone said we wanted it cracked out for their album or whatever. So we're going to do that right now for you guys. Show you uh, how it's done. What tool are we using, Casey? A Husky nail clippers. And why is it easy for Husky nail clippers to be used on these? Uh, we've been told by other coin dealers, Trey Cameo, for example, that it, they're the best. Gotcha. Do you want to show us how it's done? Yep. Alright, so we're going to get the, the clippers, we're going to go right to the edge, and we're going to crack it. Look at that, dude. Two pieces. And then you could just, Beautiful. Then you could just slide the coin out as, uh, well, maybe you have to clip it a little bit more, but you should be able to just slide it out when you're done. Wear eye protection, kids. Ta -da. Enjoy. Did you guys enjoy today's video? If you did, please leave a like. Uh, comment your thoughts down below. Uh, we kind of did a brief overview about the few coins that we have in stock and stuff that we've kind of learned along the way. Uh, but we hope you guys did enjoy it. Uh, subscribe if you're new. We'll see you next time. Acoustic collectibles. <laughs> Stardom, dude. <laughs> but yeah, the hits, bro. <laughs> PCGS purist. Purist. It's tough. Be in the health. <laughs>